A good realtor will spend three hours a day calling. This is not your typical boring real estate show. This is real estate marketing redefined, uncensored, and unedited in what's working today in the market minus the fluff. This is Real Estate Marketing Dude, because just having a license isn't enough. Now please welcome your host, the unprofessional professional, Mike Cuevas. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Marketing Dude podcast. Folks, we got a very, very relevant show for you today because the truth is, is that all of you real estate agents, even uh, some of you lenders out there, you guys have to become investor friendly because if you don't, the iBuyers are going to cut you off by the balls. I promise you that. They will be in every single market around the country. They're in test markets right now, but watch when they scale because the properties will eventually be limited in the markets they're trying to buy in right now. They're just testing, testing, testing. They're coming everywhere. And with that, being said, traditionally in uh, real estate agents, uh, we've butted heads with investors in the past. We're always, because real estate agents are always like, oh, I got to get the highest and best dollar. Folks, highest and best price is not always what people want, period. When you're looking in the motivated uh, seller game, it's differently than targeting a traditional retail type seller. Um, have you guys ever wondered why real estate investors can generate so many listing leads, but then a damn agent can't generate none? It may it boggles me. And these guys are buying properties for fucking pennies on the dollar. Yet you guys are sitting there like, how the hell can I not get any listings? So who we have on um, the show today, someone I actually met, I don't even know if you know this, but you, I met you at a conference in the short sale days, probably in 2008, when these things, short sales started popping around. And um, nobody knew what the hell to do. I was in Chicago at the time and I just saw a huge opportunity. And fast forward three, four years later, I became, we had one of the largest short sale teams. I was taking down eight deals a month myself, closing 30, 35. And a lot of that had to start with marketing and lead generation when we pivoted our business from a traditional pre-construction model, new construction, peak pricing back into the 2006, seven days to just the market literally falling out the bottom. And there's a giant opportunity in the world of short sales. And those are the best years of my career. And when I met this dude, he had a system back then. It was like a done for you direct mail system. I think it was called Sales Team Live if I'm not mistaken. And I was, uh, I signed up for this course and it's honestly how I got. And I closed, uh, I probably got like six or seven out of my first 10 closed uh, short sales came out of as a result of that seller lead generation system. So this dude is the real deal, folks. We're going to talk a whole lot of stuff about real estate investing, but as in any market, um, not only a really skilled investor, but he understands how to reach the people that they buy the houses from in marketing in the real estate space, especially in the motivated seller space is the name of the game. Because uh, if a real estate investor could buy pennies, houses for pennies on the dollar, why the fuck can't you list pennies or list houses and get them a lot more money? Isn't that what you guys do? So our friend here, Mr. Gary Boomershine, is going to walk us through uh, and provide some insight. And I want you guys to start thinking outside the box. You need to start changing your offering. So without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our guest, Mr. Gary Boomershine. What's up, dude? It is awesome, man. Super, super excited to be here. Gosh, you covered a lot of topics. And I, I, one thing that I just picked up on was what I'm calling the hybrid agent. And one of the big things we're seeing is that the smart real estate teams are realizing that they're going to be squeezed out over a period of time. This whole iBuyer movement is huge. And if you are a hybrid agent, meaning you're actually able to come in and offer to buy the property, at the same time, possibly list it and have multiple offer strategy, you're going to crush it. And not that many people out there doing it. So I think that over the next 24 months, what you're teaching, Mike, and getting people to have the ability, to, because you could, you're could, you going to be able to beat the iBuyer movement. And if you don't do this, you could be a dinosaur and roadkill. <laughs> I'll be a lot nicer than Gary is. You're going to go out of fucking business, period, because every single real estate agent needs an instant offer today going forward. It's just the way it's going to be. And real estate investors are equally getting squeezed just by the very same iBuyer. So trust me, none of these guys like these iBuyer companies because they're taking opportunities from them. But when real estate agents and iBuyer or and, and regular local real estate investors mix, you guys actually have a much better offer offering to help these people who need to sell these houses because there's nothing less expensive about iBuyer properties. There's a lot of hidden fees and a lot of BS in there that a lot of people don't see. 
So what we're really doing is competing against big tech. We're competing against big corporate America and all these different hedge funds that are really just buying properties right now. Is that a fair uh, statement, Gary? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can just tell you a couple of weeks ago, I was in Omaha, Nebraska. And then right after that, flew to Fargo, North Dakota for two real estate teams. I was presenting the number one team for Berkshire Hathaway in the country. Jeff Cohn. Jeff Cohn. So super good friend of mine. He actually moved over to Keller Williams. He was actually presenting with Gary Keller and their whole model. So Jeff, his team, uh, they did 700. I think they actually did over 700 killer listings last year. And they are also buying houses, but their whole strategic advantage is being able to come in with a multiple offer component and their agents that are doing it are crushing it. Yep. And now, now they're coming in instead of like always losing out to, you know, and just being one of 50 agents coming in. Now they can come in and offer a solution to the seller, right? It's typical solution selling, which yep. is build a relationship, build trust, offer a solution to solve the seller's problem. And, and most people cannot even fathom and compete against that. And then I was with Eric Hatch doing the same thing. <laughs> offer multiple solutions. So Gary, I didn't even get a chance to introduce ourselves. Folks, I want you guys to know who you're listening today to today because this is probably one of the most sought out trainers and real estate guys, uh, investor space with the marketing and the strategies and all that in the country. So Gary, for our audience who doesn't know you yet, please give a quick little overview on who you are. Tell them why you are on the show today. <laughs> yeah, no, no, super humbling. And I've been around a long time. And it's funny how fast time goes. So my name is Gary Boomershine. I run a company called realestateinvestor.com. I've uh, been around a long time. We're the largest marketer in the real estate niche. Uh, a lot of people know us from our uh, historically, what was called REI Vault. And uh, we actually rebranded. I ended up buying two software companies, merging, acquiring two software companies in our niche, specifically around the marketing and the sales function, which is if you don't get that right, you have no business. So and they're hand to hand. It's just like internet, right? You got you got to generate the demand and then you got to convert the demand. You got marketing, you got sales, they go hand in hand. And so we've done over 70 million pieces of direct mail. We're sought after as the go-to guys for cracking the code on how to get the response from the seller that actually generates ultimately the motivated seller. So we've got software that are, we've got over 1200 clients, actually, I think it's closer to 1500 now that are on our platform for basically plugging in. So one system, integrated system, so you don't have to have all this stuff and phone systems and whatever, it's all in one that manages all the demand. So the lead generation and then the lead management, and then I have services done for you which means the people that will actually do all the work. So instead of having to hire and train and manage and keep busy, people can get those experts from us without any of the hassles. Uh, that means we can actually manage all the direct mail, pulling the mailing list, doing all the work and making sure that we have consistent lead generation, high quality leads coming in. All the follow-up, which is absolutely key. I wanna talk about that today because if people don't get this concept, doesn't matter what they do, or how much of a unicorn fairy dust marketing list or postcard they have, if they don't have the follow-up system in place, along with the phone team that can actually do all the qualifying and screening. So I've got a large phone team that does all of the qualifying phone conversations and appointment setting. And then we just hand over the qualified opportunities or appointments over to our members. And so we've got software, and then I have services on top of that. And then we even have a super high-end uh, traction, inner game accountability coaching platform around that for people that are really trying to scale and you know they want a life because it's very easy to be consumed and be nothing more to a slave to your own business. And so uh, that's what we've been up to. Uh, my background, I've been in real estate forever. I uh, grew up in a family real estate uh, business. I was a licensed agent in 1987 when I turned 18, uh, cold calling, door knocking, we had a rental properties. I was out there with a paintbrush. That's how I paid for college. And then I didn't want any part of that. I actually got a computer engineering degree. I'm right in Silicon Valley outside of San Francisco and went down the technology path. Uh, worked for the largest consulting firm in the world next to IBM. It's called Accenture. I did that. And then I did four technology software companies as an enterprise sales guy selling high ticket software to the Fortune 500. And then it was great, but I had no life. It was like 80 hour weeks, 
And even when I'd come home, I think I had 187,000 miles on United in 19 and 2003. We had two babies. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm like, you know what? This is no life. And we basically burnt the bridge, went full-time real estate investing, been doing it ever since. So my whole business in the early days, 2004 to really about 2008, I was the short sell guy. In fact, nobody even knew what a short sell was yeah. uh, pre-2008. You'd, you'd ask an agent, a bank taking less than full payoff for a loan, they would laugh at you. That's right. I think you. I did about... I think I did about 300 of those, all super high-end luxury short sale deals that I bought and then flipped and then transitioned my business into more lending. And, and so we, we created the whole real estate rehab lending model of funding on after repaired value. And I did that. Uh, we trained over a thousand people around the country on that. And then when the market shifted, Again, about 2013, 2014, I got back into the buy mode. So I, I'm still active. I do a lot of deals. I'm not a big, you know, I'm not a high volume guy. I'm more quality versus quantity. Yeah. But I love this game and I love, you know, sharing what works and, you know, uh, this guy around knows, good people. This guy's a, a marketer. Hence, well, how we got the domain realestateinvestor.com. I'm super jealous. When would you buy that, by the way, out of curiosity? Yeah, you know, that's a great story. I was an investor in the original business. Colin Egbert started that, good friend of mine. And then I I was an investor and then I, I, I he wanted to go to Columbia and get into Bitcoin. And so I bought the company. He, he and I are still friends, but I bought that in 2011 and didn't do anything. I'm like, I don't want to actually use that realestateinvestor.com until we have something that can change the entire industry. And I feel that, you know, we're definitely on the right track 100%. in terms of this new market. And I want to do, I want to talk about that. We are going into a new market. A lot of people don't realize the biggest transfers of wealth happen in these cycle changes. And there's three things that I think all of us, and I want to share this as we move forward to today, there's three things that I'm coaching everybody and, and sharing anywhere I go and uh, in, a, in my community and in peer group, but it's the three P's. This is a time to, to first protect what we have, pivot, and then profit. Because in the next 18 to 24 months, there is going to be a massive transfer of wealth. It is coming. It is a tsunami. And those that are prepared for it are going to take advantage of it. And those that don't may get crushed. That's where I want to start. What I'd like to take this show is I want to start with the opportunity, then I want to get into the marketing, I want to go into the conversion. Uh, let's start with the opportunity. I'm going to show you what I'm going to share. I want to get your opinion on a couple of things. What people want today is more options in selling the property. And it's not so much about like, here's what it comes down to. Working with an investor arm in your business makes you more marketable. It makes it starts more conversations than when you don't have one. At the end of the day, I could give a shit whether the investor buys the house or not, because all of those are still listing leads. And there's never a better pitch than when you're at a listing appointment and the seller knows that they're not going to accept your offer. But when you just tell them straight up, 100% honest and say, look, if you really want retail, then we, if you really want $500,000 house, $500,000 for your $450,000 house, you don't want to sell to a cash buyer. You need to list it on the MLS. And I could also help you with that too. This is about spinning off the lead and monetizing it in a number of different ways. And like I could tell you, and Gary, I'm sure we'll back these numbers up. Real estate investors, Gary, how many deals do you look at that actually work for you? Maybe one out of 10, one out of 12? Yeah. It's and, uh, typically uh, so. 45 leads should generate about 15 qualified opportunities, of which half of those are probably ones that we're going to make offers on. So out of 45, we're down to seven and we're converting. My conversion on a seven is pretty good. It's usually I'm, I'm picking up one out of three of those. So I'll get two deals out of it. I would say on average, most people that I'm seeing that are coming in with these crappy offers are closing about one in seven. Um, and I want to chat about that too, because a lot of investors, and especially for all of you agents that are following this, the agent teams know how to sell. Uh, most investors don't. They don't have formal backgrounds. They are they're learning what's called transaction selling versus what I think most realtors know how to do, which is solution selling. Okay, I want to just I want to point it out. It's a super important. Transaction selling is typically low ticket, high pressure single offer. 
as opposed to solution selling, where you're actually building a relationship, building trust and coming up with the solution to somebody's problem. And you usually do that with multiple offers. And so that's a huge competitive advantage for all the agents out there. And a lot of the million dollar to $10 million real estate companies right now are doing the same thing. They're coming in and saying, hey, it's not just a one trick pony Correct. offer. It is being able to help the, you know, the sellers, you know, if you can come in and say, hey, I can give you option A, option B, or option C, or, or anything in the middle, right? If we look at selling in any industry, it is always three options. We go to a car dealership. You're always on the, you have a low end spend. model and you have a high end model, right? If you go to a gas pump, how many different options of gasoline do they have? They have three. Correct. There's a science around the buying, the, the way the psychological mind works during a buying cycle. And so being able to come in and give them multiple offers. So if you're a realtor, you should be able to make a cash offer, right? Hey, I actually have a buyer, could be you right? Or it could be somebody else, one of your cash buyers that could offer you this price. And this is what you would net with no pain, close in 14, 21 days, no open houses, nobody going through your toilets, trash and closets and right, especially during COVID. Or you could do a listing at pretty close to as is minimum fix ups. And this is what you'd net. Or if you do the full fix ups and get the property to full retail value, you get this. Right now, all of a sudden, the seller can actually see, wow, this guy is actually helping me Correct. go through the process. And those Folks, people that do that are crushing it. Folks, I want you guys to just literally, this is what we're, dude, he's right on is the, this option plans. Let's change. You mentioned the car industry. Here's what CarMax did, you guys. People, hence the terms, you cars salesmen, that came out of a bunch of realtors, basically, or types of realtors that are used car salesmen, hence the thing. And here's what CarMax did that was really, really sharp. I think Daniel Pinker, I forgot what book I read about this in, but um, um, here's what they did. All they did is they realized that people didn't want to be sold. They wanted to be served. So if you walk into a CarMax today, they don't have salespeople. They have consultants. And what the consultants are trained to do is not sell you a fucking car. They're there to show you how to use Kelly Blue's book that are on monitors at every single station within CarMax so that you can see all of your options and then make the right decision for you, not for them. So what we're talking about with selling, we're talking about optional selling because do you really care what camp they fall in at? I don't care if they buy to my investor where I double end a deal or if I take a listing or if I'm like Compass and I have this hybrid type model where I could actually lend them the money to fix up their house and then they could flip their own house. It's those type of solutions that are going to beat iBuyers. And I believe every single real estate agent offering in the country needs to adapt them because Gary's right. Anyone who says it's my way or the highway is out of business. You have to be able to monetize several different options from the business side, but that only comes by offering several different solutions for the people you're trying to target. So the opportunity is huge. I want you to tell us why uh, the tsunami of properties is coming. And then I want to get into why the marketing has. So why is this? Yeah. Why did you say that a couple of minutes ago? You said this huge All right. tsunami of properties is coming and they're going to be investor deals. Why is that? So first off, the caveat is I don't have a crystal ball and I'm not a PhD. I'm a data guy. And I also look at historical trends. So if we look at the real estate, real estate has been a seven year cycle for over a hundred years, Till almost to the day. This, it, just, it just happens. It just happens that this cycle has gone on longer than any of the historical cycles. Seven years. And by the way, it has always come from what I've been calling for the last four or five years. It always comes from a boogeyman event. It doesn't come through natural supply and demand. It comes from some external boogeyman, right? 9-11, the 2008 mortgage collapse that came out of thin air, right? COVID. Uh, now we have COVID, whatever anybody wants to think of COVID. I won't go down that rabbit hole. But we have the oil embargo. We've had you know, the Cuba Missile Crisis. It has always come through an external pressure. Okay. And we also have a fiat money currency, which is made up of something that's made up of nothing that they can control and contract. And so there's a bigger play. And so there, this seven year cycle has very similar characteristics. And so I believe we are at the end of that cycle. And what is coming, and you can actually see it. There's, it, we're also printing money at, at numbers that are unfathomable. We, the last I saw, we were at 27 trillion in debt. We couldn't even pay off the interest on that before they started COVID. So we're going to see massive inflation, in, in, and I think that's a 
could be a very good thing for, for us. So here's what I'm seeing. Over the next, right now we're in a cycle that's a pause. So everything looks good, just like a tsunami. When a tsunami is coming, right? The water goes out and a lot of people go to the beach and they're looking down at the beach and they're like, oh, look at all the little fish, you know, and they're hanging out. This is a time to get to higher ground. So I think there is a, definitely a great play right now in real estate, but it's being conservative. I think we're going to see a decrease. We're going to see an explosion of foreclosures that are coming. There are people, if we, if we just look at like California, we're on curfew, they're shutting down, all the gyms are closing. The people that have retail centers, they still have to have homes that they can't afford. And the PPE and all the financial stimulus packages are running out. So I see a massive increase in supply of properties that are going to go into default and ultimately out just like we've, we saw before. Whether it'll be as bad, I'm not sure, of 2008, but that's just a natural supply and demand. Followed by, so there's going to be some incredible, incredible buying opportunities. I think the prices are going to actually go down probably in the center of the country. It's not going to be as bad. Right, right. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska during the cycle didn't go up or down more than about 6%. But on the coastal areas like California and like Florida, and they all handled about the same, like California is almost exactly the same as 13 other markets, right? So I think we're going to see a decrease in value in those markets. Great buying opportunity followed by inflation where the value of those properties skyrockets. And so those people that are prepared to take advantage of this will be able to buy incredible deals. And then the valuations on those houses, I think are gonna be out of control. I mean, a, a million dollar house being $5 million in seven years, not just a million dollars being you know doubled. So here's why this is important guys, is because, um, and let's tie it together because the investor offer, like you're not going to be retailing these properties, you guys. Like these 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 people are going to be facing foreclosures and be time limits. So like depending on what state it is, if you're in Texas, you only have 21 days till sale, like from notice of default, I think it is, right? And you're, you're, so you're screwed. You don't have the time. Therefore, they don't have time for an open house, staging the house, making it look all pretty so you guys could karate chop and fluff the pillows. Like these are motivated sellers. You have to get out of your head that everybody wants highest and best dollar. As Gary is saying, they want highest and best solution for their specific problem today. And uh, that's what we have to really look at. And that's why we have to have an investor I buy or offer instantly. I don't care if it's an I buy or offer. There's a couple of ways we're looking at this. One is to compete against the I buyers. Okay. That's what I mean by an I buy or offer. But as these quote unquote leads will start coming in, they're going to be distressed. They're going to be probate. They're going to be divorced. They're going to be loss of income. They're going to be foreclosure. And with that, you have to have solutions for all those. And the only solution, for example, like in a short sale scenario, do you know you can't even start the short sale process until you have an offer? And no one knows what the fuck the sales price is going to be until they do their stupid BPO. And it's a whole backwards process. But you have to have the investor offer to get started is my point, right? <laughs> so you have to have the offer. So there's going to be a tremendous amount of opportunities for that. In addition, I don't want you guys to think of this as short-sighted either because he's, he's getting some really good points. Real estate agents work so hard and I'm like, start working smart. I'd rather work with a guy like Gary who buys 25 houses a, a year than to work with one guy who buys three houses over the course of their lifetime. And that's what a real estate investor really is. Plus, Gary, as an investor, is going to come across plenty of other buying opportunities that he's going to give to me as listing that I wasn't even involved on because I'm giving him so many other deals to cherry pick. Are you guys starting to see the leverage? That's what I want you guys to realize. Now, Gary, I want to segment into the marketing side and why there's a big opportunity in this. And here's what I've never understood. There's never been a seller lead generation system for real estate agents before. We have one coming up, but there's never been one before that. And the question is, is why? I still believe there's only one type of offer that gets a seller to call you. And that's, I will buy your house for cash tomorrow. <laughs> Can you please explain that to people? Because it's very hard to give an offer, like to market for sellers when you don't have anything valuable to offer them. And no, I'm a real estate agent. It doesn't count. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, that's a great point. Let me just tell you, 99% of real estate agents don't actually even understand the concept of direct response marketing. It actually direct response, it's different than sending out postcards and letters. Direct response is, it's called the six M's. So it's the market, message, media, multiple, months, and money. And there is a formula. It was actually created by Dan Kennedy. It's also the same formula behind a lot of the infomercials. That same formula, why do we watch any infomercial and they have the same exact formula, the same spiel 
with the extra bonuses and all the stuff. It's called direct response marketing. You have to basically put the right message at the right time in front of the right people in the right what we call media, whether it's a postcard or letter. Let me give you a couple of examples. So realtors think it's all about branding and it's all about color and pictures. And I can take any any one of those pieces that are done by the realtors and I can take one of my ugliest, crappiest, cheap postcards <laughs> and I will outperform it by probably not just five to one, but 10 to one in terms of getting a response. So Let me just touch one. real quick on what they're, so you guys, he's talking about the big open house postcards, the 11 by 17 jumbo postcards that you guys send out and you guys send out and you spend a few hundred to maybe even a thousand dollars on them. Then you wonder, you're like, why didn't I get a response? And it's because there wasn't a specific offer. <laughs> go, That's right. Go, it, go it really, it's, it's putting the message in front of the right people. And I will also say, like, even we do a massive amount of marketing for realtors. We don't have a single postcard that says we want to list your house. Why? It's the message around, I can come in and buy the property. And, you know, one of the, one of the postcards we have, it was actually created by a guy that does over a million dollars a month in volume as a real estate investor. He's had Brad Chandler. You probably know Brad, Express Home Buyers. We call it the 1031 exchange postcard. We've tweaked it to get a better response. But it basically, it, I've recently sold a house, right? I've recently sold a property. I don't use the word house because it's too personal. So I recently sold a property and I'm looking for a few others with the proceeds to utilize the proceeds. So if we're sending that out to a landlord, a burned out landlord or somebody that has an inherited property, which is a fantastic list, they will see versus all the pretty stuff or the listing, they'll say, hey, this guy's got cash right now and he's also a smart investor, right? So it's just, it's the wording, it's the copy that we're putting in front of the right person. You're speaking their language. Because any, right. any absentee owner knows what a 1031 exchange is, they're probably going to be participating in one in the next five years if they have any bit of savvy with them. And again, like in this particular case that Gary's mentioning, an absentee owner is one of the best lists you guys can go out and target, but they're not all distressed. Sometimes distress can mean I'm burnt out. Um, it doesn't have to be foreclosure, right? They could just be, hey, I'm done with this property. I already you know, did what I could do with it and maximize it. Or I have another opportunity. I need to sell this and liquidate and roll over into this so I can maximize that opportunity. So um, that's right. Very- another, another little thing. Never put a website on your marketing material. If you're sending out a, a postcard or a letter, you don't put, especially an initial, to get an initial seller call from a cold prospect, somebody you do not know. You put the website address on, your response rate will drop by at least 50%. Wow. At least 50%. Why? Why? Because, and I didn't know this either. You would not know it unless you're doing tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pieces and split testing everything, which is a luxury that we're able to do that nobody else in the country that I know is able to do. We're split testing. I mean, putting a highlight or putting something in bold. I put, we, we get, we, we have a, a little green stamp on recycling paper that actually gets a bigger bump believe it or not, on the response. But what happens is somebody will see the website, they're not taking action, or they'll go to the website and then they'll surf somewhere else. They'll never opt in to your website. So you, what we're looking for is a very specific message with the phone number where we can get a caller ID. Now, the second thing I wanna share, this is huge and most people miss this. It's not just real estate, but only 3% of all of the deals will come off of that initial call from a seller. So almost everybody, almost everybody only works that initial call and they assume like, oh, this is not a motivated seller. Only 3% of the profits are made. 90% of the profits happen after the sixth interaction, which means phone calls, follow-up, text messages, et cetera. And less than 10% of any real estate investor or agent follows up more than twice, right? So less than 10% ever follow up more than twice when 90% of the profits happen after the sixth follow up. So you really have to get to get it right. You want marketing to get the response, to get a seller to opt in, to give you a phone number, to have a dialogue. And then you need to have the right mousetrap, right? For follow up. Now agents do this, but they do it in what's called a farm, right? They build a small farm and then they're doing all the follow up and interaction and building trust and all their circle of network, right? We're just doing it in an automated way. As real estate investors, we're putting a message, then we're putting it into a system, we're doing automated follow-up, 
we basically follow up with the right message, text message, email messages, and then we'll have a phone team that will reach out in a super friendly way to just make contact. I, I'll give you a, one little interesting story. I shared this a few weeks ago uh, with a larger audience, but we had a gal, her name was Cheryl Twitty. She was on the East Coast and she'd been with us for a long, long time. I mean, professional real estate investor. And she said, gosh, Gary, you don't change out the postcards. Like you'll send five or six or seven, but it'll be the same ones. I walked her through the formula of why we do that. Why do you do that versus constantly changing things up? And she got a phone call from a, from a seller and the seller said, you know what, Cheryl, you've been mailing me for probably three years. I've kept all your postcards and I've always knew that you were going to be the person to buy my house. So Cheryl bought 16 houses and her and her husband net $800,000 off of those deals from one seller just on the consistent, the, the woman who was finally ready to sell. And Cheryl basically called me how this all, how I even found out was Cheryl called because she was canceling our service. And she sent a personal email saying, hey, can I talk to you for a few minutes? I'm canceling, but it's not because of why you think. Because I retired. She, said, <laughs> she goes, I, my husband and I are taking a year. We're going to travel the world. And she goes, I just wanted to let you know that like everything that you, I tell everybody, anything that Gary tells you, just do it because it works. <laughs> and I'm not even a marketer. I, I'm more of a sales guy. All I wanted originally is if you can put me in front of the seller, I know I can close them. And I needed to basically build a system to get me there. And, um, you know, I don't design my own postcards. I, I I allow other people in the industry to like give those to us. We make them better and go from there. But most of them aren't anything crazy. Like the ones I've seen, they're like handwritten. They look sort of ugly and they're on purpose. <laughs> so I used to do a lot of like when I was, when I bought your product, I used to do a lot of absentee owners and then foreclosure and all that. And here's what really happens. You guys, these people who receive these postcards, they don't ever throw them away. It's the weirdest thing. They tend to like file them. You'll see this time and time again with the ones you actually get results with. And you'll go into their, someone's house and you'll see like postcards you've sent them like months and months ago. And you're like, dude, you actually kept that? Because what happens is if you caught what Gary also said, it's at the right message to the right people, but also most importantly is at the right time. And nobody knows when that time is. And it's usually an outside circumstance that calls that. So in this case, what he's talking about, let's just say you came across a 75-year-old woman that has seven properties. Great. When is the right time? Well, maybe the right time is once her husband passes. You don't know what happens in their life that actually gets them to pick up and, and do the call. But what we do know, it's no differently than on how we build brands with video is consistency. Um, you only build your personal brand with the communication of the same audience over time. Well, you only generate leads by literally asking the same person over and over again. And Gary's doing it what he's describing in direct mail. Gary, I want you to tell us uh, targeting wise, who are we targeting these direct mail to? And direct mail, really, Gary? Does that shit still work? Yeah, <laughs> great, great question. <laughs> and I, you know, if anybody that would be against direct mail, it would be me. I'm a technology guy, got a computer sure. engineering degree, like and, and we have all this right. But here's here's the reality: most people don't do it because there's a cost associated with it. So there's a you know, and and most people do it, they do it totally wrong, and then they quit. But almost all of the big players that I know in real estate, even to this very day all do direct mail. Why? Because it's consistent, it's repeatable, and it's scalable. All right. I, let, me, let me walk through. There's really two kinds of marketing approaches. You've got on-market and you got off-market. We're looking for either on-market deals or off-market. On-market would be on the MLS, bank-owned foreclosures at the auction, or HUD properties, or REOs, of course, on the MLS. That's typically on-market. Off-market means we got to go direct to the seller. So how to do that? direct mail, text message. So that definitely works. It's a, it's a high volume, lots of, you know, you got a lot of responses coming in. So you got to have somebody that's dealing with the, all the negativity. Uh, there's cold calling, which has all kinds of FTC regulations around it, especially if you're a realtor. You have uh, to have then, a legit iBuyer legally, correct? If you're going to text messaging, there's, do you guys, most of you guys don't know this. This is why you can't just upload a random fucking list into a service. It doesn't matter. You cannot spam, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, you know this more than I do, but you cannot spam uh, a list unless you have a bona fide buyer, then it becomes legit. Is that correct? That's correct. And there's some other things. We actually do it. We have a service where we can do all of the outbound. We can pull... And I've got a service that does what's called data stacking. So we can actually 
we can pull the lists, we can stack them to find the vacants and some of the other characteristics that we're looking for, press another button that will actually skip trace those, professionally skip trace that list, uh, brings up to six or seven different phone numbers back, and then you, we can actually even do the text messaging. Here's the reality with the, with the FTC. Somebody has to manually push the button. So you can't have a service, and there are a lot of them that do this, but you can't have a service that will you'll load a list and blast 10,000 phone numbers. Either you'll get shut down really fast from Verizon and AT&T, or you're going to actually have the FTC after you. So somebody has to manually push the button. Well, it just happens that I have a team overseas that man manually will push the button <laughs> <laughs> because they're you know inexpensive resources, and sure. we've set it up where you can push the button really fast, right? But yep. you can't. So that's one. You know, if you're an investor, you're playing with a different set of rules than if you're an agent because if you're an agent, you have certain places where you have to put all the disclosures on there. But I love the reason direct mail works is because it's scalable, it's predictable. The thing with direct mail is you've got to get the right piece and the right copy. There are so many little tricks and I will give everybody, for anybody that wants, I'll give you a place to go. I wrote a, a document that I've given away and, and I'll, I'll give it to everybody, but it's all of the techniques and tricks of the do's and the don't do's for direct mail. And I'll give it to everybody where you can even see how our system works. I'll give you a phone number, we won't market it, we won't do anything, but you can get uh, a link to that guide and a whole bunch of other stuff that I have that takes all the mystery out of this. Like what should your budget be and how many pieces do you have to mail yep. in order to make money and all that. But here's a couple other things. Four by six postcard, I will outproduce dollar to dollar to get an initial lead over a letter or something fancy. I've done offer packages. We've done what's called lumpy mail. We were a huge mover in the lumpy mail, which means putting some gadget or gadget in the envelope. Uh, and small the postcard four out for, outperforms? A small postcard to get the initial response. And then the follow-up should be something different. Gotcha. So the follow-up, it costs, it typically, you can do 10 times the amount of follow-up at less cost than just getting the initial lead. And so most people, they, you know, you're paying to get the lead. A couple other things. That makes sense. Use, can I just get one thing there just to make sure they get this? Yeah. So you guys, there's two different conversion things happening here. Okay. One is just on acquisition, lead acquisition. So like just getting someone to opt in and then, so literally throwing a bunch of shit at that. Boom, boom, boom. Until they take action. Then once they do totally different sequence, they're still follow up. They're still direct mail, but it's not the same as they were getting like, I'll buy your house. I'll buy your house. Is that fair? Yeah, that's absolutely. So we use a postcard, but the postcard has to have the right words. It has to be you know, there's so many little components. Let me give you an example. You want to use at least 110 pound paper. You want to use the true four by six postcard because most of these cheap printers, because of the way that they're maximizing the paper, they'll be a little bit smaller. They'll call it a four by six, but it's not. So when we talk to sellers, they'll, it'll be like, oh, we got 15 other pieces, but they called us. Why? Because it stood out. It had a little wow. bit of a subtle component. The canary yellow typically will outproduce white or any other color. Sometimes you put a 800 number on it. We, we actually just changed it. For years, we were putting an 800 number. Why? Because we wanted to get the phone number. There was caller ID blocking, right? 73% of all the inbound calls today come from cell phones, but we couldn't trap the caller ID to call the seller back, right? Now, we've actually, this is one of the reasons I, I acquired this other software company, one of the best in our industry is that the phone numbers track. So now we're able to get a local phone number. The other piece is when we send out marketing, when you follow up with them, it has to be the same phone number because of all the spam that people get. I don't know any other system other than ours that does it. It was a, this has made a huge difference, right? If I'm putting a 925 number on my postcard, right. When I follow up with them via text message, it needs to be the same phone number because otherwise we will lose about 30 to 40% of those people. I so won't answer lot 800 of, number calls even. If I saw an 800 number text, like I think it's like the only texts I'm getting 800 numbers are like all these political contribution <laughs> campaigns and they're, they're annoying. Right? <laughs> uh, these I are know. all really, this. you guys, this is absolute gold what he's telling you. This is shit that, gosh, I mean, you have to, well, you have to do 70 million pieces to figure it out. Very cool. Yeah. I have one thing. I think this will really help. I'm going to share my screen. Yep. And if you're following the video part of this, if not, you can put it in the show notes. I actually am releasing right now an advanced 
I call it my revolutionary sales training and compression coaching. It's built as a one month training program. This is actually coming out of module six of everything I've learned on how to actually close and get the highest conversion. But I think there are four key systems that you need. A lot of people think that they're going to buy one system for every part of their business. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in any industry. But here are the most important for marketing and sales. It's really marketing and sales is actually broken up into four components. And a lot of people screw this up. They don't get it. But marketing and lead generation is a marketing function, right? Now, you may be doing it, but just realize that it's a marketing function. It takes expertise in that area. And there's one output there's one thing that you care about, which is the leads. It is how much am I spending to get how many leads in the pipeline, all right? Then they should be, go this is the missing component right here. The second one is called lead mining. Lead mining is not a sales function. It is done by a, a grunt worker, less than $10 an hour person, typically customer service. They're separating, they're looking at the leads, they're separating the good, the bad, and the ugly, they're making sure that the follow-up goes on. And then a phone person is actually picking up the phone and trying to interact with the seller, all right? And have a dialogue and screen them. And the, what the output of lead mining is opportunities. Opportunities then go to the salesperson. That could be the realtor or that could be the real estate investor, you know, CEO. And those opportunities are then turned into making offers that stick and closing deals. And what I see is that People are always looking for this unicorn, fairy dust, motivated seller. And by the way, everybody, it does not exist. There is no such thing. All leads suck. There is no such thing as a motivated seller yet, okay? It first takes them to come into the system, and then they need to get warmed up, which is called talking to people. I love uh, one of my good friends, Brett Daniels, says, TTP, this whole business is TTP. You got to talk to people. You can have all the systems to get you to talk to people, but somebody has to talk to people. <laughs> if we could come up with some system where you didn't actually have to talk to a seller, then you know, tell me because it would probably be worth billions. It doesn't exist. So the problem that I see in our industry is that everybody is working so hard and they're spending so much time trying to find the right list or the right postcard or the right system. But what they're realizing is, wow, I need somebody Generating leads is easy. That should be a click of a button for anybody. It is the inside sales, phone person, lead mining function that most people are missing. That, that is, that's following up. Most sellers are not ready to sell on day one. They usually are asking questions. And then after a few weeks, it could be a few days, it could be a few weeks, it could be six months to a year. I got a guy, uh, Je uh, Justin Scherfey, He's in um, Spokane, Washington, 22-year-old kid. He actually quit college because he was watching one of my podcasts and he's, I think he's now on his 11th deal. And he was telling me a story. He goes, Gary, he goes, he, he ended up getting the initial lead last December and it took him about two and a half months to get the seller back on the phone. But the seller didn't even live in the state of Washington and said, hey, Justin, I'm not going to be ready until June or July to sell. Justin just kept reaching out our system told him, hey, it's time to, to, to reach out and talk to this guy. Plus, he's getting automated emails and, and, and text messages. And Justin just got the deal. It took him seven months. And the seller finally, you know, because of the follow-up, basically came in, loved Justin. I think Justin made $27,000 on that deal. It was a quick flip. No work. It's just it was a wholesale deal. It's a, it's a really good point. I, I You're right on. It's like a lot of these uh, generating the lead isn't the hard part. Converting it is. And really what at the end of the day, Gary, isn't it just like good old belly to belly relationship building skills? If someone trusts you or likes you, if you are approachable, if you're not like, if you don't have what I call commission breath coming out of your mouth, you can have a conversation and then you just got to convert those conversations, but don't expect them to convert right away. Fair statement. Absolutely. There's another one and I'll walk through. This is right out of the training course that I did, but a lot, I've gotten a lot of feedback people have said this has really changed their business. I call it the motivational price curve. So, and if you can, and I'll explain it if you're not able to see the video, but there are four stages of motivation. All right. And the first stage, I'm going to, I'm going to basically on the left-hand side, I call this the seller price. And then on the, on the lower part of the graph is the motivation level. And there's a price typically as an investor, here's the maximum 
allowable offer, what we call in real estate investing world, the Mao. And it, let's just say that that price is 200,000 bucks, all right? And I'm gonna show this very interesting curve that you're gonna see the seller price, they come in typically not motivated. They're not ready because it's a huge emotional decision, right? They have not mentally committed to selling. And so they go through these four stages of not motivated to reasonable to motivated. And what I argue is that what we're looking for is not the motivated seller. We're looking for the reasonable seller. It is the seller that, like in an investor world, that is, that is willing to sell. And they may actually sell at a little bit below market for us real estate investors in the next 30 to 90 days, right? There's a lot of people now, a lot of people will come in off of the marketing and when they're not motivated and they're intrigued, they may want a million dollars for their $200,000 property. But I'll tell you a story. There's a gal right here in California. She wanted $740,000 on the property when I met her. Seven forty. dollars I closed on it six months later for four ten. dollars And by the way, I bought it creatively. I actually took over the mortgage. And, and that's a great, a really interesting story. But almost... 99% of all investors and agents would have passed on this deal. But I tell everybody, assume nothing on the initial lead. You have to warm it up. So I asked her, how did she come up with the 740000 She goes, well, a neighbor a couple of years ago said that if I ever wanted to sell my house, that she really wanted to buy it and she'd pay seven forty. So that was how she came up with the number. But all said and done, with some follow-up, I came out to her house three times. It was six months later, I bought the house for four ten, almost 50%. And she actually did need to sell. There was a point in time where she's getting her car repossessed and, and she re really needed to get out of the house. So remember, you're, there's no such thing as a fairy dust perfect list. It is all a numbers game. There's a science to it of, of what is the cost per deal, which is going to equate into a certain number of leads that have to be mined and followed up on by somebody other than us. Right, it's going to res result in opportunities that we can then go close, and and, makes, and and getting in front of opportunities should not be hard for people. Makes a lot of sense, folks. This is no different than a listing. Uh, the more market time on your listing, the more negotiable the seller becomes. So, like, which listing is more likely to be negotiated? Uh, the one's been on the market for six months, or the one's been on the market for six hours? Well, the one that's on for six months most likely has the higher uh, negotiation or more negotiation room on it. And what Gary's saying is really the same thing. The people, the first time you talk to a motivated seller, he's saying their chances are they're going to want more money than what they're really going to take. And as time goes on from the time that they initially express interest of potentially selling their property, you could almost always guarantee that the number they tell you up front is not the real number they're going to be willing to take down the road. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct. And I, I always tell everybody, hey, assume nothing from the initial lead and you know, slow down on making your offer. So don't just come in. Don't be a one trick pony. I, I call, I have a, a, a model I call rapid. It's a sales process. Rapid stands for resolve differences quickly, set a quick agenda, probe for pain. Then you investigate the decision together. And then the D at the very end of rapid is a decisive action to close or sell to you. And it is not cheesy. There's no special words. It's very focused on solution based and sales. Most real estate agents have been trained this. Most investors have not. But people buy and sell to people that they like, trust, and respect. One of the oldest rules. Second one is he or she who speaks first loses. So why would we be coming in with a quick, crappy offer? I always tell people, make a range. I always come in with a range of what I can actually buy. I, I never early on, because I, I call it the foot in the door. I, I don't want to come up with a crappy offer when the seller is not ready have them slam the door and then somebody comes a week later and buys the property for $1,000 more. That happens a lot. So I want to I want to slow it down a little bit, right? I want to understand what they're looking for and then create the solution for them. And uh, when you do that, I mean, this is, this is, by the way, this is nothing, I didn't create this. This has been like some of the largest companies in the world that have a trained sales force. This is what they train them. It just happens that you know, most, a lot of agents are trained this way. Most investors aren't. So if you can do both, you're going to crush it. <laughs> no doubt. Dude, what a packed podcast. I hope you guys got quite a bit out of today's show. We went through marketing, conversion, opportunity. Folks, 
become investor friendly. I'm telling you, the writing's on the wall. If you want to sell more houses, become investor friendly. If you want to sell more houses, become investor friendly, period. It's coming and um, the iBuyers are here. And if you don't think they're coming to your market, I guarantee you, you're mistakenly wrong. They will be there just a matter of time. Gary, why don't you go ahead and uh, close this out, tell our listeners how we can, uh, how they can find you, go ahead and plug your stuff, and then we'll get this uh, wrapped. Awesome. I want to give, I promised everybody I would give a phone number. I've got, uh, this is a great way. This will actually get you a link to our website. You just, you can, and, and a bunch of bonuses that I have that definitive guide on direct mail. I've got a, what I call a scorecard that'll basically give you all the numbers around direct mail, uh, all the way down to the number of times that somebody has to dial the phone. <laughs> if you want to make a million bucks in real estate, here's, here's what it's going to take broken to a weekly and monthly basis and a bunch of other stuff. Um, that text number is 925. So you can text it and just put dude in there so that we know that it came from Mike. So put dude in the message. Just text 925-320-0575. And I'll repeat it one more time. You can put it in the show notes. 925-320-0575. You can check us out, realestateinvestor.com. And got a lot of resources, a lot of content. We're actually releasing a new membership site, which is basically a lot of content on real estate investing. A uh, lot of stuff from Jeff Cohn's on there for agents that are building teams, et cetera. And um, yeah, check us out. If it's something that we can help you, you'll find we're very people oriented. Our whole goal, we got a hundred people on staff all over the world. And uh, if there's something that we can help you out on, great. And if not, use our resources and, you know, this is going to be an incredible, incredible buying opportunity for those people that are starting with what I call the three P's. It's protect, pivot, and then profit. And, um, you know, I'd love to get to know a lot of you. So thank you very much, Mike. This has been awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, dude. Those are some awesome tips. I'm going to take some of them if you don't mind. Folks, thank you for listening to another episode of Real Estate Marketing Dude podcast. You guys know how to find us, realestatemarketingdude.com. Done for you video scripting, editing, and distribution. We will define the right strategy for you. Whether you're trying to generate leads or you're just trying to generate referrals and build upon your personal brand, we can help you in a one-stop shop. We're sort of like that one-stop shop, uh, but for video, whereas Gary's a one-stop shop for real estate investing. Same concept. Uh, we just do everything we can with video, including the sales videos to convert these damn leads. So don't be scared to reach out and call me and schedule a demo with a dude. And don't forget, folks, we are also launching our local celebrity video bootcamp, which is the most comprehensive video marketing training for lenders, real estate agents, and real estate investors in the country because we script, distribute, and edit videos, all different types of walks of life, personalities, and whatnot. And that has allowed us to create a really kick-ass training. And if you're stuck with how to do all this video shit, I'll show you how to do it on your cell phone and your nine-year-old can shoot your videos. It's not hard. It's just new. And that's why we're having the training. So follow us on social. Thank you for uh, leaving the reviews here on the podcast. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, you name it. And we will see you guys next week for another episode of the Real Estate Marketing Dude podcast. We appreciate you. Have a good one. Attract. Stop chasing. Peace. Today's episode may be over, but we have plenty more to keep you busy. To get your complete blueprint for building out a real marketing plan for your real estate business, head over to realestatemarketingdude.com and see if you have what it takes to really become more than just a typical agent. Are you the next real estate marketing dude? Find out here next time on Real Estate Marketing Dude.